All right, guys, it's a snowy, nasty Monday, and I'm gonna take this opportunity to do a little equipment shopping. See the pretty stuff behind me? All right, guys, my first stop on this trip is uh, Rico Equipment, Indianapolis, Indiana. They sell a Link Belt and Hyundai. So uh, we're gonna head on inside and uh, talk to Tyler here. He's gonna hook us up. I'm driving the van because it's practical. It's a lot better on gas than my old truck. So let's head inside, catch up with Tyler and uh, see what he's got to say. All right, guys, this is Tyler with uh, Rico Equipment. They got, I believe, 18 different dealerships across the, the Midwest here. And their two main brands, I believe, are Link Belt, Lee Bear, and uh, Hyundai. I guess that's three brands, not necessarily two, but anyways, who's counting? <laughs> So he's actually the one, he's the salesman I met up at uh, Louisville at the ICUEE show uh, while I was there at the Hyundai booth. And I told him I'd get back in touch with him and I did. He was able, he was nice enough to send me some um, awesome paperwork. Um, had a lot of the specs uh, of the machines in there, which was very useful. He was also able to compare uh, the Hyundai and Link Belt machines that I was interested in to the uh, other machines I was looking at, uh, like Volvo and John Deere and Cat and so on and so forth. Uh, tremendous amount of great information. So he sent this to me on a Friday. I spent the entire weekend combing through it. And um, whenever I got to Indianapolis, basically what we're doing here now, I have a bunch of stuff highlighted. I have a bunch of questions noted. So we're just kind of going down through here and we're not even talking price at this time. At this point, we're just talking specs of the machine and I'm gonna make sure the machine he offers will do what I needed to do if that makes sense. So um, huge thanks to him. There's a, a, a tremendous amount of information here. And, and some, I, at the point I'm making this video, I still have not made a decision on which machine I'm going to make. But uh, in that video where I do make the decision of what machine I'm going to buy, I will go over these spec sheets and what stood out to me and why I tend to lead more towards uh, one machine over the other based off these specs. Now, I'm not going to be the guy that buys a machine solely off the spec sheet, but these specs do confirm some stuff that I feel from the feel, feel from the seat of the machine as far as speed and reach and travel and um, different important stuff like that. And then there's some stuff on a spec sheet you just got to take for what it is, you know, weight, transport height, width, uh, horsepower ratings, etc. like that. So, uh, Tyler was a huge help. Uh, no matter which way this deal goes, I do appreciate his help. Uh, everybody there at the dealership was uh, awesome to me. And uh, yeah, so we, we discussed this for about an hour here and then uh, we headed outside and uh, checked a few things out. As you will see as this video goes on, uh, this dealership is the dealership they have that's closest to me. And it's also Tyler's home dealership, but they did not have the exact machine that I was looking for in the Hyundai model. They did have the exact machine I was looking for in the link belt. So uh, we'll walk outside here and check out, one. I think it's a Hyundai HX160 and then the link belt uh, 135 or 145 spin ace. So well, let's head to the lot. This was a rental unit. Yeah. Remember I mentioned National Salvage? Yes. They were the last one. Okay. We said they got a bunch of machines, got several hours on. Now what engine is in this one? This is the Perkins. Perkins? This is what, 150 one? 160. Well, this is the same one. Uh, Simple little setup. Yeah. Uh, you said this is basically this is a high uh, all day pump, which is modeled off the top. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Want to go? 
comes to attention to detail, one thing that uh, that I truly, truly was kind of blown away when you look at this. Every single hose actually has a part number on it. Yeah. So let's say, for example, if you were to draw a hose, rather than having to go through a diagram or call and say, well, it's, 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 they're all routed very well, too. Yeah. They're just, yeah. yeah. Come with free snow? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, how do you open it? This is this is the mission system. How long has it been in operation and service? They so Cummins started this with the. Um, I'm taking on the motor side. It's definitely warmer in here. What's that? It says it's definitely warmer in here. All right, I'm assuming this goes up somehow. What's that? The seat go up? Yep, right here. That's fancy. guys we poked and prodded around here some i really 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 like this display now that i've turned the camera on i have no idea how to use it now oh, dang it i was just doing oh that button menu it's simple i figured it out in like five seconds that's saying a lot you guys know i'm an idiot but uh i don't know don't really have any complaints that like them. I don't think there's a lot of mechanics that like them. <laughs> it's kind of the same concept overall with the, uh, the spinach. Uh, everything is going to be a little bit more packed. Right, right, right. It's still even the Hyundai. a long trip to the top through the snow believe it or not i actually had a cat 314 for a short period of time but it wrecked Seats are so comfy compared to the 120. Hey, there's your paperwork you forgot. Yep.
right guys just a couple things real quick on this one i do like this joystick setup a whole lot better than the hyundai this here i do not care for hardly at all and uh the visibility on this thing i know it's zero tail swing it is horrific but it's still a nice machine all right guys we just left the dealership there in indianapolis uh had a great time meeting with tyler looking at the uh, hyundai and the link belt machines they're both awesome machines still leaning uh leaning heavily towards the hyundai uh, there's just a lot of things about that machine i like and uh, tyler was great everybody there was great uh gave me some great information uh you've seen i had pages and pages and pages of questions uh, he was able to answer most of them the ones that he couldn't answer he's uh working on them for me but uh, we're back in the sexy minivan. Even got the car seat, even though I ain't got nobody with me. And we're heading north again. We're actually heading uh, about four hours north of Indy to uh, Detroit, Michigan. There's a Volvo 140E. Uh, I think it's an EL uh, that I want to look at. So um, the one thing at Indianapolis is they did not have the exact machine I was looking for. I was looking at their 145 series. And all he had on the lot was the 160 but uh, he's making some few phone calls and i think i can take a slight detour coming south and go through ohio and possibly sit in the seat of one of those machines because i'm kind of curious how the cab is set up on because they have a different cab uh, because they're zero tail swing machines so i'm hoping uh, i'm hoping that pans out but we got about uh, four hours of hammer down on the road here uh, trying to stay ahead of a snowstorm to be honest with you but uh, we get to Michigan, I'll get you guys back out of my pocket. We'll check out a Volvo, hopefully. That's the plan. All right, guys, we just rolled into Michigan. I think I see the machine we're looking at right there in front of us. We'll check her out. All right, guys, this is a Volvo 140 EL. This one fits my build to a T. It's got the progressive link thumb. It's got the hydraulic coupler. It's got the push blade on it. It's got the wider 32-inch uh, pads. Um, this machine is a 2016 it does have just over 2,000 hours you can see somebody's put some uh, custom-made uh, bumpers there on the side just kind of doing a walk around the machine here I couldn't uh, I have to voice this over because I couldn't get good video while I was there it was windy and nothing was going going my, going as planned I guess but uh, I don't really have anything uh, negative to say about the machine I like the way it's laid up laid out um, I know for a fact it would definitely fit um, exactly what I'm looking for I'm a little bit skeptical I like the idea of having access right here to check oil and stuff like that um, I'm just a little concerned about all the clearing and stuff I do how much debris and stuff may actually get caught down in there I may just be overthinking that it's not a maybe not that big a deal I got fancy Volvo there as far as the cabin stuff's concerned, it's a it's a nice cab. I really don't have any complaints about it. Uh, I'd say it's very similar size to the Hyundai, very similar feel. Visibility is the same. Visibility out the back with the exhaust system there is not quite as good, but everywhere else is just as good. That's my biggest complaint inside the cab. The LCD monitor, uh, that's the Blake control, but the LCD monitor is just not near as user friendly and it's not as uh, much of a visible uh, visible place as it is on the uh, Hyundai machine, but the blade on this thing is built like a tank. Uh, here's the thumb. I'm not overly excited about that thumb linkage setup. It would definitely do what I needed to do, but um, I like what I got better. But overall, it's a good machine. I know it fit my needs.
All right, guys, we just left looking at that Volvo, and uh, it's about what I expected. A few things that I really like about it is it's got the wider 32 inch path, like my 120. Um, I like the blade, but the blade's not as wide as the pads, which is eh, kind of takes some of the effectiveness away from it, I guess. Um, I don't like the cab on it as much as the Hyundai machines, and I really do not like their display as much as the Hyundai machine. Uh, I like the Volvo coupler better, but I'm not a big fan of that thumb. Um, I don't know, the way it's built, I just ain't convinced that's gonna be a long-term deal. The only thing that I can really say bad about the machine is for some reason, and I don't know why, the bucket pin has a has a lot of play for a machine that only has 2,000 hours on it. The boom's tight. Everything else is tight. But that bucket pin, it probably has more play than the bucket pin on my, on my John Deere. The, the bucket pin on the John Deere is not sloppy. It's the dang um, coupler that's sloppy. Which I know that's an easy fix, but it kind of makes you wonder uh, what kind of life the machine had the first 2,000 hours. But uh, Taylor got a hold of me. And uh, the actual Hyundai machine that I'm interested in, the 145, they have one in another dealership in uh, Toledo, Ohio. So I'm gonna head south, get me a hotel room, uh, swing in there in the morning and uh, check it out and possibly make a decision from there. So I'll uh, keep tagging you guys along. Ooh, <coughs> excuse me, I, I gotta wake up. Put, uh, put a few miles on the old uh, minivan here yesterday, but it's the next morning. We are on the south side of Toledo, Ohio. I can't remember the name of this little town. Perryman, maybe? But uh, we're getting ready to pull into the uh, Rico dealership here. They actually have the model Hyundai excavator that I'm looking at. So we'll roll in here. I think we're going to be trying to find a guy by the name of Adam. There they are up there. You see him? Roll in here and uh, see what they got. All right, guys, here it is. This is the HX145 LCR. I, uh, man, there is so many things I really like about this machine. One is the cab. Absolutely love that touchscreen display. Uh, very, very, very simple to use. I figured it out almost immediately. Um, air ride seat whole nine yards it's uh yeah just a good great visibility very comfortable cab i have no complaints about it whatsoever another thing about these Hyundai machines that i it just blows me away is one i've never seen uh, a machine this well laid out on the inside everything is labeled everything has a part number on it everything that says from swing um everything is labeled everything has the part number on it everything says what it is uh good heavy doors got the guides on them if i had one concern about all of this is the computers are on top of the death tank and the death could be corrosive i don't know if i how i feel about that but uh Man, I'll tell you what, I'll I'll take it. Same thing back here. I mean, you can actually get into work on stuff. Everything's labeled with what it is. Filters are easy to grab. It's got the backup camera. batteries are uh some of these machines you get to the batteries and they're so far down there it's ridiculous but i like it all right guys so basically what we're doing here is one of the numbers i noticed on the spec sheet that gave me a little bit of concern was the transport height of this machine the transport height on the spec sheet was 10 foot 7 inches the legal height I can haul is 10 foot 5 inches. So that uh, begs a slight bit of issue and concern. What we found out is the boom's not the problem. It actually has this safety rail on the other side. Uh, this safety rail does measure 10 foot 6, but that is a very easy 
uh, fix the clip an inch out of that. I'm sure it's that height for a safety reason or, or something like that, but I, I'm comfortable now by taking a few measurements uh, that I can get this thing on my trailer and I can haul it legally. That was a concern of mine. Uh, the Volvos and a few other ones are a little bit shorter on transport height. This one here had a higher transport height. All right, guys, in case you're wondering, the spec sheet, the spec sheet basically says I can't haul this thing, it's too tall. And we were thinking the boom was the height. It's actually that rail over there. I'm sure it's that height for uh, some safety regulation, but um, I need to cut an inch out of that thing to be able to legally haul this thing. I can do that. I cannot cut an inch off the boom and legally haul this thing. So we're gonna pull this thing back up here and uh, park it. I'll uh, see if I'm smart enough to show you guys this monitor here a little bit. So I'm driving my hands. Put that right there. So this thing, it is just super simple. You hit the menu button, uh, you got your modes whatever tools you want to use whoops go back it's all push button auto boost uh, whatever tool you got on there you can uh, spec it out um, get all your monitoring it's got all your uh, active faults and all that stuff um, this is where you can manage your maintenance and fuel rates uh, all that good stuff that's your display about how it's um, set up, how you see it on the front. Names are cold. I'm not sure what utilities are. Entertainment. What if I get YouTube on there? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? But look at this cab. Just very, very, very simple. Air conditioning controls, straightforward. Radio controls, don't get much simple on that. Cigarette lighter and a key. That's all a guy needs. Oh, and an air seat. That's kind of nice. I will say that. But, uh, yeah, cup holder, I don't know guys, kind of like it. We'll go ahead and take my chances and climb up here on top, check her out in the snow. I think I mentioned it before, but this has the uh, Perkins engine in it. There she is down in there. That would definitely be a little bit of a booger to work on, but it looks like if you take the uh, counterweight off the back, everything's very accessible. Or pull the exhaust system off the top, you can probably get to a lot, but all these uh, compact ones are a little difficult to get to. But most stuff on this stuff thing is considerably more accessible and competitor machines i will say that and again everything i mean look at that he's even got an aluminum radiator tank everything else is plastic it's i don't know it's hard for me to call this a cheap machine everything seems to be very well built to me i mean even the uh and even these mounts for all these hydraulic hoses and everything i mean that's it's all serious business again look up here part number part number on everything you know how handy that is if you're out in the field broke down and you got a call and you just ramble off the part number and they're not looking to uh oh there's a problem might as well go ahead and order two of those I'm sure cleman will have that tore off in no time but i don't know guys i really do like this machine for a lot of reasons i mean this is just good engineering right here I'm get straight to the engine right there kind of way don't even have to come off Somebody, somebody has thought this thing out from a function standpoint all the way down to a working on a standpoint and I will give them credit on that. All right guys, we got the old minivan in the wind and we're heading south. I've put, uh, put almost a thousand miles on the old van on this little uh, research trip, but I got a lot of questions answered. I learned a lot. I looked at a lot of things that I wanted to look at. I looked at a lot of different machines and uh, Basically what it's coming down to is if money was not an object and I could buy whatever I wanted to buy, that Hyundai 145 HX 
Um, I just, I really, really, really like that machine. I know it's not the popular choice. I don't care. From an engineering standpoint, from a setup standpoint, from a platform standpoint, uh, that machine has got it going on. Uh, there's just so many things I like about it. There's only a few small things. There's only a few things I don't like about it. They're so minute, they're not even worth mentioning. I'll give you two examples. One, the uh, lights on top of the cab are not very well protected. Um, and two, I'm not overly excited about the location of the def tank. Um, I think that could be placed a little bit better. But again, that's pretty minute, picky stuff. But uh, what it comes down to is, I'm not sure if I can afford that machine. That's a, that's a very nice, expensive machine. Uh, the dealer's working with me to see if, if there's a way I can get my, get my butt in the seat of one of those. Uh, my second choice, if that falls through, is probably going to be that Volvo 140 I looked at. It's also a very nice machine. It's not a zero tail swing machine, but uh, it's got 2,000 hours on it. It's been, those 2,000 hours, I can tell, has either been a rookie operator, rental hours, or pretty rough hours. I mean, the bucket pin's got a lot of slop in it. Uh, the thumbs, it's not broke, but it's been well used. So, but for what the guy's asking for, it reflects that. I think it would it would make me a good machine. It'd be a good replacement for the 120. So, I'm going to go home and uh, ponder on it, make a few phone calls, wait on a few phone calls to get returned, and uh, see where I end up at. But uh, at this point, it's pretty much down to the Hyundai and the Volvo. That's where, that's where I'm at. So, Guys, I hope you enjoyed coming along and uh, appreciate you tagging along. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Maybe I'll have a new machine.